Link engaged. Visit us at teamspeak.com. All right, guys, here we are. Game number one between Nex Hack and Wangson. TVP, we're going to start out on Zelnaga Caverns. This is, uh, this is a really exciting map for TVP, in my opinion, because it's got so many attack paths, but it's also got this gold base in the middle. And uh, if Terran can control that, it becomes quite difficult to cross that center. Now, how do you feel about that statement, TLO? Is that pretty accurate? Uh, that's very accurate. Um, Zelnaga Cavern always being a tricky map, um, revolving around so much the two central watchtowers. Mm -hmm. Even though you kind of have a lot of sneaky ways to get by, everything is more or less inside. Yeah, yeah. You always like, want to get control of that. You do have those, those outside attack paths that you can try to exploit, but they're very narrow. They can be walled off. Uh, for the most part, all the all the real excitement happens in the center of the map. So um, we'll see kind of how that unfolds. I feel like Protoss uh, generally needs to win before Terran can secure that gold base. I think if Terran gets that gold up, it becomes very, very hard. Um, but Yeah, yeah, I, I agree a little bit. But, but uh, uh, certainly there have been... Too. Like... You can harass the gold base so nicely with Colossus from the backside, mm -hmm. and with Blink Stalkers and Templar. So even if get Terran gets it up, you can still deny mining from there. Still being a hard player. Fair enough. And uh, now we haven't seen Hack play, or I haven't seen Hack play any TVP. So I'm eager to see how he goes about it. I see he's gone ahead and thrown down the early gas. He's got the racks on the way. Probably gonna get a quick tech lab and maybe uh, start cranking out a few Marauders. Uh, one of the things that I love seeing in the uh, in in the Korean playstyle, especially the Korean Terran versus Protoss, is the fact that they'll just make three units, like a Marauder and two Marines, and go attack. Um, why uh, why do people do that, and why is it so damn effective? Um, well, the answer is really obvious because you can punish your opponent with risking very little in an early game. But just sending out three units is almost never gonna end up in a huge loss for you. You're always gonna kill at least a unit or two for your opponent as well. And you, if you catch your opponent off guard, you can get A scouting and B sometimes actually do serious damage, delaying tech and killing economy. So sending out a few units almost always a good choice. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the concept of applying pressure is one that uh, not enough people really uh, grasp well enough, especially I guess the lower level players out there in the audience. You you you, at you achieve so much by attacking. It's not just an opportunity to kill his army or to do damage to his economy. If the other player is going to defend, he actually has to kind of reveal his tech. Um, and, and and so by pressuring, it, it's it's a scouting mechanism in and of itself. And we can see that uh, Hack has made uh, a couple of marauders. He's got concussive shells on the way, and I do expect him to push across the map with these. Uh, with, with concussive shells done, uh, it'll be very difficult for Huangsen to really punish him at all. And uh, he will be able to very safely secure his natural expansion just behind these three units. Yeah, that is um, so correct. Um, Thorkos are a little bit faster than Marauders, obviously. But as soon as you have concussive shells out, you can basically stop them from chasing your units because you can slow them down. And then just punish the Stalkers so nicely with Marauders while Zealots and Sentries are not really going to catch up, so you're quite safe out there if you have concussive shells. And I like the follow-up by Hack being even more aggressive about getting to know what your opponent does. He gets out a Reaper, oh, wow. he's going he's gonna to see with his front army, there's not an expansion out there, and he can apply pressure to the front, so Wangsen is probably going to take units to his ramp to defend, so the Reaper can actually poke into the main this is nasty, man. This Reaper coming right in through the back. But look at this. Uh, Wangson actually has a Stalker in the back. It's like he's played against this before. Uh, Marauders do poke up the front, and as soon as they do, that Stalker is pulled, and the Reaper's going to make a beeline right for the uh, right for the mineral line. Um, he's not going to get too much. He might kill a probe or two. Uh, but uh, but for the most part, I feel like this was an excellent defense out of Protoss. Mm, it was an excellent defense, but heck, still more or less accomplishing what he wanted to do. Um, didn't do as much damage as he wished for, I guess, but took out the salad. So everything Protoss is doing, getting up his expansion safely. He knows there's no starport, no void rays, no DTs. He doesn't have to get an engineering bay, but can just pump out bunkers and get units 
on Moss. Right. Now, two gate robo off of one base seems not that standard to me. I feel like I've, I'm used to seeing Protoss go like one gate expand or even three gate expand. Uh, two gate robo is a little different. Am I missing something here? Is this something that's become more common that I'm not aware of? It's a little bit more popular and actually always has been on Xelnaga. Because you mm. can sneak around and apply pressure on the natural so easily just by force fielding and going around and immortals being very strong against marauders, fight with sentries especially. Uh, it's very hard to actually hold against Protoss applying pressure so easily and Ooh. moving out with two marauders, he's gonna get force fielded, he's losing two marauders um, wasting four force fields, but still a good trade for Protoss, and now it's going to be so difficult to actually hold. Yeah, losing those two Marauders is a big deal. Uh, the pylon is done, more units being warped in here. There are, there are two bunkers here for Hack, and he's got a lot of SCVs pulled to help repair. Those SCVs are actually going to come off the line and attack. Uh, great force fields going down to limit the ability for Hack to really salvage those bunkers, or I guess repair those bunkers is the more accurate term here. And uh, uh, Hack does have enough Marauders out. He is pushing this back. These Immortals are doing so much damage. Oh my god, Immortals just destroy Marauders. Uh, Hack having to retreat into those bunkers and with the warp in happening here off this pylon, I think Hack's in a lot of trouble. Hack is in trouble indeed, but Mangsan is still on one base, so if Hack can actually just hold for a little bit longer, he does have a reactor, he does have a factory coming out with a starport and his bio army is going to be so strong in a minute or two. He, I don't get why he doesn't have any SCVs on his bunker right now. Should know that he just needs to defend for a little bit longer, but now oh. he's in trouble. Yeah, that was a, I guess, a okay force field, just limiting space a little bit. He's completely forced uh, force hack out of the natural, and I feel like a hack might lose this command center. It is like it flying over to the main as quickly as it can. Uh, Hack is going to have to try to hold his ramp. Uh, Wanks is just pushing up with all these immortals, all the SCVs being put off the line. This is such a powerful push. Oh my god, Two Gate Robo is so good. Yeah, um, on the Selnaga, it's such a good choice to do a little bit of a slow defense by Hack. If he doesn't lose his two Marauder there, I think he can hold easily. But now being in so much trouble, Protoss in his main base, down to 15 supply, 8 harvesters, just more Protoss units streaming in, and there comes the Korean cheat. GG, so wow man, uh, Wangson. Uh, I thought uh, I thought Hack had kind of maybe survived, but as you said, he stopped, he put all his SCVs back to work, didn't have anything in place to defend that bunker, or to repair that bunker. And that was just a really strong one base timing. And of course, I think it's noteworthy that we mentioned that uh, it wasn't, it was two gate robo into four gate. So that was, that was very, um, that was very much, is it fair to call that an all in? He was making so many units and he had no intention of expanding. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm not sure if I want to call it an all in. In that game, he didn't go for an expansion, but I think it has very well as an option for Protoss to take that expansion. However, from his scouting information and initial push, just decided, okay, Protoss, I can win. Uh, Terran, Terran made a little bit of a mistake. I, can, I just can take it without hesitating and just not risk anything. Just end the game as quickly as possible. If he sees Terran being more careful, throwing down more bunkers, he can very well just take a base, even the gold base maybe. Yeah, um, yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, so, it, it really kind of clever play there at a Wingson, and I, he he sort of he just he controlled that game very well. He he didn't take any damage from the cute little two pronged early game poke that Hack made, and then he just turned around and brought a brutal push of his own. So uh, that was a really nice play. Uh, we'll be moving into game two in just a minute, guys. We're gonna have a quick commercial break. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 